Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So that was all about the central nervous system where we spoke in detail about the brain and the spinal cord. Let us now talk about the next type of nervous system that is the peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system is made up of the various nerves which connect the brain and spinal cord to rest of the body. So this is the brain and this is the spinal cord. But how do you connect it to the rest of the body? As, as I was telling since that time that you get hurt somewhere in your arm and then the information goes to the brain. So for that there has to be some nerves to carry that information. So all these peripheral nerves together form the peripheral nervous system. Now there are two types of nerves which form the peripheral nervous system. Cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. Cranial nerves, they are derived from the word cranium, which is a part of the skull. So these are the nerves which are arising from the brain. So it connects brain to different parts of the body. There are total 12 pairs of cranial nerves which exist. Similarly, spinal nerves are those nerves which arise from the spinal cord. So it connects spinal cord to different parts of the body. And there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So there are more spinal nerves than cranial nerves. So one reason behind that is since even if you make the information reach the spinal cord, from spinal cord it can reach the brain because brain and spinal cord are connected to each other. So that way here you can see there are various nerves which are connected to the spinal cord. So first let us talk about the cranial nerves. Let us see what are the various cranial nerves which are there. So olfactory nerves, optic nerve, oculomotor nerve, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus. So these are all examples of the cranial nerves. So if you see, it's a huge list. So there are so many cranial nerves which exist that is the nerves which connect the brain to different parts of the body. So that these type of nerves, olfactory nerves they are for smell. Similarly optic nerves are for vision. So they actually carry information from the uh, sensory organ, the photoreceptor organ that is eyes to the brain. So they connect brain and eyes. Similarly the oculomotor nerve, they are related to the eye movement, the movement of the eyeballs. There are so many movements in our eye, right? The movement of the eyeballs, the movement of the eyelids. So all these movements are controlled by the brain. And who connects brain with the eye for these movements? Oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve. Similarly, trigeminal nerve, they help in chewing. Abducens, again for eye movement. Facial nerves, they control the muscles in the facial expression. That is why you would have seen sometimes when you are happy, your facial expression changes. When you are sad, your expression changes. That is, the expression changes due to the movement of the nerves on your face. And that is controlled by the facial nerves which are connected to the brain. So vestibulocochlear nerves which is which is for hearing, glossopharyngeal for swallowing, vagus which conveys sensory information about various organs to the heart. So that is how it is connected from brain to heart. Spinal accessory which controls the muscles in the head movement and hypoglossal which controls the muscles of tongue. So if you see the movement, I mean any movement which takes place in your uh, head region whether it is movement of the eyes, movement of the tongue, movement related to swallowing, hearing or anything like that, they are all taken care by the cranial nerves. So looking at this picture, you can actually see where are they located in our, uh, in our skull. Now let us look at the spinal nerves. Now there are 8 cervical nerves, 12 thoracic nerves, 5 lumbar nerves, 5 sacral and 1 cochlear nerves. So if you see this portion is the cervical where you have 8 cervical nerves which are connected to the spinal cord in this region. Then you have the thoracic region where you have 12 thoracic nerves from the thoracic region and then you have the lumbar region, then the sacral region and the last one is the cochlear. So this is the thoracic region, then next is the lumbar region which is followed by the sacral region and finally the cochlear region. 
so these are the various regions of the spinal cord from different from which different nerves come out and they originate from the spinal cord and connected to different parts of the body. So these are the set of the peripheral nerves which connects the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. So now the question is how is the sensory reception and processing done? As I said, when, when you see a hot cup of coffee, you don't bother. I mean nothing happens to you, right? But the moment you touch that hot cup of coffee, what happens? Now, even before touching it, your eyes were able to see that cup of coffee. So your eyes must have sent an information to the brain that what is it that I'm seeing? And your brain would have told that this is a cup of coffee, right? But then your brain has decided that, okay, it's fine. Even if a cup of coffee is lying there, that's okay. So you don't really need to do anything. But the moment you touch that hot cup of coffee, what happens? Your skin sends an information to the brain that the, this is extremely hot. And then the brain interprets that information and then the brain sends an instruction to the muscles that, okay, take your hands back. And that is when you take an action. So basically the reception is done by the sensory organs. Now the question is, how is the reception done by the sensory organs? So here in this section, we will talk, we learn about few important sensory organs and how the information is processed. How do we know that whatever we are seeing is this particular thing? How that processing of uh, sensory reception is done? So in all these examples which we have been discussing so far, you would have seen that the primary stimulus is received by a sense organ and then that interpretation of whatever is being sensed by the sense organ, that interpretation is done by the central nervous system, whether the brain or the spinal cord. But the question is, how is the sensory reception part done? What does, how does our eye see that, okay, this is what I'm seeing? Or how does our ear know that, okay, this is what I am hearing? So how is the, how, how does an eye function or how does an ear function? So in this section, we will talk about two important sensory organs in human beings, that is eye and ear. So sensory organs help us to sense the changes in the environment. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.